You are listening to the API The Docs podcast. We are here to talk about API documentation upstream and downstream. So we give each other our perspective. And what we do is we step aside from our individuality and we think of the user. What would the user need? Is it what we're seeing or is it a combination of what we're seeing? Or should we bring in another person to give us a different perspective? And that's when we usually contact either product management, DevRel, or even engineering. We ask them for their input and then we come up with a solution together. As Mina said, we are writing documentation. We are writing something that is a tool. It's not a work of art. It's not uh, something that is for its own sake. It needs to serve a purpose. It needs to get people out of trouble, basically, in as little time as possible. If sometimes it could be that we have, we both have pretty strong opinions and we want to keep them, but uh, we still manage to not get our ego in the picture. And we say, you know, okay, I'm really convinced of this thing. You're really convinced of this thing. What actually, what's the best for the user? What works best for them? And then we just go go on from there. Now we kind of have a practice when we try to run like a hack day internally, when we sit together some of our, either our customers or our internal users, the engineering team and developer relations, when they basically need to see if we are able to build an app with the new functionality. That's kind of say, if you if are not able to do it internally in like a couple of hours, then it's not good enough. Hello and welcome. I am Laura Vosch, host of the API The Docs podcast, and my co-host is Anat Pojar. We are delighted today to introduce our three guests. They work at Miro, which is a widely used and well-loved visual collaboration tool. We have here today with us Anthony Rue, who is Developer Relations Lead at Miro, Mira Balani, who is Senior Technical Writer at Miro, and her co-host Marco Spinello, who is also a Senior Technical Writer at Miro. Mira had a lot of experience as tech writer when she joined Miro. Well, all three of you joined at roughly the same time period in 2020. That was, of course, a very exciting time for an online whiteboard solution, right? Would you tell us a little more about yourself, Mira? Hello, everyone. My name is Mira. I am working with Mira as a senior technical writer. I joined Miro last year, and it's just been a very interesting journey so far. I currently work with developer documentation, mainly focusing on REST API and very, very passionate about that. I come with about 20 years of experience in the software industry, having worked with various types of documentation and in various domain areas. And uh, actually, Marco is a longtime friend uh, from API The Docs and Write The Docs, so I was really, really happy to see him here also. Um, and uh, Marco, you're coming from a different angle into technical writing. You joined a little bit after Myra, um, the team, uh, but you're coming from a linguistic background. So you approach this uh, technical writing differently, I think. Yes, that's right. Uh, hi, Laura. Hi, Annette. Um, I, indeed, I joined uh, Mido also more or less one, uh, one year ago, uh, a month after after Mida has started. Uh, so it's um, it's a team of two right now. Um, and uh, I don't have um, a technical background. I'm, I come from linguistics, so I um, learned technical writing as I was doing it, uh, which means that most of the time I'm flying by the seat of my pants. Um, it's, it's really cool because it allowed me to, um, to learn a lot of technical stuff, understand it, and understand it both from a from a technical engineering point of view. Uh, when I, when I interview engineers, when I dig into the code base to to figure out how stuff works, and and then translate it in a in a way that is uh, still technical but um, human readable and human understandable. Let's say uh, instead of a machine, um, I think that I could kind of recycle. Uh, some some of the skills that I had learned uh, as a linguist to uh, to try and and really understand how our users so our target audience thinks and talks uh, because if I use the words that they normally use it's much easier to for them to go through the docs to find what they're looking for and to actually um, reach the goal that they have in mind. 
And you also ask the hard questions at the conferences. Sometimes. Okay. Um, yeah, sometimes. And uh, it's, yeah, I'm, I miss conferences, I must say. I mean, in real soon. person conferences. Soon, soon. We are going to uh, test a uh, open space conferencing tool from September to, to, to bring back that feeling of, you know, like we're still people. Nice. Even though we're going to be little avatars, but whatever, it's going to be cool. <laughs> and let me welcome our third guest, Anthony, uh, who is also probably known to uh, API The Docs uh, podcast listeners. Um, Anthony is uh, coming as a developer relations uh, specialist extraordinaire uh, with a very, very impressive track record. Um, and uh, you also joined uh, Miro about a year and a half ago? Exactly the same day as Marco, I believe. And do you work together with the, the team of two or um, do, you, do you work together every day? So we work together every day. We actually sit next to each other when we go to the office, but we're part of two different teams. Um, I'm part of the developer relations team where we have our developer advocates that are building the bridge between our platform users, developers, and the company. And Marco and Mira are sitting into developer experience that are in charge of building the developer portal and all the tooling to facilitate the adoption and helping developers to be able to build apps faster, quicker, and that everything is easier. So even if both teams really collaborate and act like it's one team, technically it's two separated teams. Yeah, very excited to be here. Um, long history with uh, API the Docs, both at a conference and at a podcast. Uh, so I was very excited to be invited and get the chance to be here again. I wanted to ask Mira, uh, as you were the very first technical writer at uh, Miro, although Marco joined uh, you soon. Can you tell us about that situation that you are in the company and you are the very first and guess only tech writer and how does it felt? And if you are looking back now, what have you achieved? Or I have to say, I feel really, really proud of um, where we were and where we've come. So from starting with one technical writer, of course, from the very first day, I already knew Marco was going to join after one month. So I was more relaxed. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have my buddy soon. I can do this for one month. Um, but it was also very interesting because a lot of documentation requirements were already there. We started working on uh, different processes that we wanted to put in place in the company. And um, But what's really good about it is it almost felt like Marco was with us, but he's just not there in person so far. You know, So we always kept him in mind. Even the processes that we, we put in place, it's like, okay, let's draft this because we need to share something with the developers, but let's make it final only after Marco comes in and he sees it and he's also fine with it. So we've already considered him being there with us from day one. Um, it was really, and to your to answer your question about how does it feel from that till now, I really feel, I think that's what really makes me stick with Miro um, I really feel so proud of what we have achieved so far. Of course, we need to keep uh, improving and we need to keep providing better content out there. Um, but I think like going from zero to what we have now is amazing. And I think like it was really a result of the collaboration. And here I would specifically like to call out that we it's not just about the tech writing team or the development team, it's really all the different teams, cross-functional teams that are putting in their effort day in and day out, collaborating, supporting, helping each other. That is what made this possible. And believe me, it's not just our internal teams, it's also the external people. So the developers, people who joined our hackathons, who provided us early feedback in November, that was like our first, uh, one of the early feedback points that we had after our early access release, where it was provided to the public. And we just started getting early feedback. We started changing content. We started uh, probably even changing our information architecture. We started um, thinking in various different ways. So it's really like every month, from the past one year has been so good, so busy, so productive that I feel very proud of this team. It sounds amazing. And uh, 
does the team expand it or I mean the technical writer team especially? So when I joined, it was just me, myself and I, and then we had Marco in the team and we do not have technical writers per se, but we have expanded in different ways. So for example, the DevRel team, they create a lot of content for us. And I have to say like, one of my favorite teams in the company, for sure. Amazing people, super fun, super talented, and super helpful. So they provide, they not only provide feedback, they also provide content to us that help us. So they think of the developer as they truly are the developer advocates. And they think of what the developer needs in, in terms of contents. They create the how-to materials. They provide feedback to us. And so although they're not technical writers, they are people who provide or create content as well. And then in addition to that, we've also done a different um, approach in terms of, in the beginning, we were, we were creating the REST API content manually using README. And then we moved to OAS-based documentation, which allowed the developers to start adding content in there, and then we edit it. So this allows for scalability, and although they're not tech writers, a lot of our developers have been trained in technical writing specifically already. So they do have all our style guidelines. They know different guidelines on creating content. And then they try to write the first draft. And then they provide it to us for review. So I, I would say, although they're not technical writers, these people are content creators. Can we backtrack a little bit here? What you just said about most of your developers have been trained in technical writing and they just deliver you the draft that you just have to walk. That sounds a little mythical. So how did this come about? Yeah, um, it was really interesting because the REST API team suddenly, uh, I saw it in their agenda and they said, hey, you know what? We want to help with this. And so the thing is, the, the best part, and I think what really drove this is we had a discussion one day and we said, hey, you know what? No matter how good our product is, if our API documentation is not on point, is not as great as we want it to be, then it's it doesn't matter because that's the first um, touch point, right? For people who use the REST API. So they are very, very particular about the documentation. They love writing stuff about the documentation. It's not like they want to do it day in and day out, but they they help, you know, they support and they love to provide the initial information. So what happened then is they said like, wh why not let's get a training on this so that we can start writing the first draft and then we can send it for review as we are anyway moving to OAS-based documentation. So we had a workshop and they got um, some training on technical writing. And then they actually appreciated more what technical writers do. They're like, oh boy, this is not easy, but we're going to try. And um, But after that workshop, I think they were more confident on the different style guidelines that they need to use. And then um, they started writing content. And of course, we have to still edit it um, because every, every profile has their own special niche skills, right? So we still review it and edit it. So how it works is they um, update the code. And from the code, they send a pull request. And they, once they send a pull request, we review the content, we provide the comments, and then they review it again. And once that's done, then we go ahead with the process. So, so far, this is um, the simplistic way of putting it. Of course, there are a lot of nitty gritties that come in the process, but yeah, this is how it mainly works. I have a question for Marco, and it is kind of connected. Uh, I mean, talking about developers who train to technical writing, because um, as I know uh, before Miro, let's say you were documenting the backend side of uh, enterprise software, and I'm interested in what's the difference between documenting the backend side of uh, enterprise software um, and technical writing. Quite a difference, actually, and. Uh... Well, the, the main one is going from um, a backend 
that is um, the whole backend that I was busy with was uh, was in Python, and um, and then there were databases, so a lot of configuration files. On the one hand, things are um, more predictable, and the the scope of the language itself, the, of the technology that you're using, is feels feels more familiar, feels more delimited. Um, uh, as a as a non technical person, uh, over time I I grew to really like Python for uh, how clear it is, how elegant, um, and and easy to read as a as a let's say passive coder when you when you as a tech writer are going through the code base to figure out how stuff works. And there was the it was bulky. Uh, everything you do about the the backend is somehow ends up being bulky databases, configurations, and then Dockerize everything and put it in a Kubernetes cluster. Everything sounded pretty enterprise, honestly. Um, when I moved to Miro, it was front end, which I had never, never touched myself. Once, in I think in 2013 or 2014, I learned JavaScript before everything changed in JavaScript, six months before. So after six months, I couldn't understand anything anymore. I was, I was so screwed. But coming to Miro for me was really the first um, serious getting in touch with the front end where there's a new framework every two weeks uh, and when there's a lot more freedom and when stuff actually compiles right away, runs right away, which was not a given in my previous job. So I can actually test my stuff uh, to make sure. Um, that's, uh, that's fun. Uh, that's a bonus point for fun, honestly. Uh, um, and having to learn, yeah, um, modern JavaScript and TypeScript, which is what we uh, we use in the front end, um, are are still challenges for me. Um, but I'm getting more and more familiar. Um, I'm getting help from uh, uh, engineers, from team members, uh, and uh, it feels, on the one hand, yeah, a little bit, well, a lot deeper and broader in terms of uh, technical, yeah, horizon. But in a way, more fun because it, it gives instant gratification when when stuff works or doesn't work, so you have to debug it. Uh, but that's something extra that I didn't have when I was, for example, uh, installing four databases. Can we add to that the um, special element that some of the documentation uh, uses Myra itself uh, to create some sort of visual aid? Yes. That is that that happened uh, as a on the way, let's say. Um, at the end of last year, um, a designer who helped us a lot with designs uh, decided to, to leave the company, and uh, there was a, a little bit of a of a period where it was a little bit difficult to find designers, and I, I had to book them; they were not available, and I just got bored. So I was like, ah, I'll, I'll do it myself. Let's just eat our own dog food. We have Miro. I work for Miro. Let's just use the thing for for wireframes um they're not as perfect and polished as a designer could make them uh but they are i find that yeah i feel that they are perfectly valid for documentation they're easy to make and to maintain because everything is in a board that is called wireframes um and um and i like the fact that i use the product that document to actually write the docs or add visuals to the docs it's um I think it's it's a good opportunity. And did you have to duke this out with Mira? Like, so this is a bit of a, a balancing act, right? Like, good enough right now um, versus perfectly reusable in Figma. And whenever a designer comes, they are going to be happier for that. Like, uh, and I guess this other kind of tooling um, trade-offs uh, or or agreements that you have to consider left, right? How do we do this uh, future forward? Yeah, um, let's say that right right now, um, there's not really um, a need to have reusable components in Figma, in the docs, uh, so we can just use images, and uh, the images can live in their own uh, common space if you want, and they can be reused. The, the images that you use in the documentation, you tend to just stay, they stay in the documentation, maybe you can reuse them for a, for a blog post, but you don't need to, to have, um, to have, complex layered images. So PNG is perfectly fine and, and saving uh, images from a, a board uh, also works perfectly fine. What I was more fishing for is what happens when you disagree, the two tech writers. <laughs> uh, we, we, I hope that we talk. Um, 
Yeah, we sometimes we disagree, not often, but we do sometimes. There were some occasions um, when we disagreed, but what we usually do um, is, okay, so first of all, I have to say Marco adds a lot of fun. So, you know, even when there's heat in the moment, the heat just goes away because we laugh about it, that it starts like that. And then, uh, so yeah, so we tend to message each other on Slack first. And then we're like, okay, if if there's a lot of sentences going on and we still don't agree, then like, let's jump on a call. And then we get on a call and then we discuss the topic. And what's really nice about working with Marco is he listens to me. And then I also try to listen to him. And um, so we give each other our perspective. And what we do is we step aside from our individuality and we think of the user. What would the user need? Is it what we're saying or is it a combination of what we're saying? Or should we bring in another person to give us a different perspective? And that's when we usually contact either product management, DevRel, or even engineering. We ask them for their input and then we come up with a solution together. So it's not like we've not had differences or we've not had difference of opinion because we're two different people. We come from different backgrounds. Um, but what I've seen is that we do this, we come to a solution and we keep the user as the center of our solution. So usually that works for us. Marco, would you like to add anything to that? Um, very little. Uh, you said it very well. Uh, yeah, when when we disagree, which is healthy, um, in in my opinion, it's healthy to have different views. Um, we we just talk about it um, because, as Mina said, we are writing documentation. We are writing something that is a tool. It's not a work of art. It's not uh, something that is for its own sake. It, it needs to serve a purpose. It needs to get people out of trouble, basically, in as little time as possible, so they can go on and keep doing what they wanted to do. We discuss if sometimes it could be that we have we both have pretty strong opinions and we want to keep them. But uh, we still manage to um, to just not get our ego in the picture. And we say, you know, okay, um, I'm really convinced of this thing. You're really convinced of this thing. What actually, what's, what's, the best, what's the best for the user? What works best for them? And then we just go go on from there. Um, I think I I like working with Mida because she, she makes me think. Um, she's really good at all the things I'm bad at. Uh, so um, that's that's a fantastic win because it allows us to uh, cover more ground uh, as tech writers uh, because we are different kind of specialties in our skill sets. Um, and uh, I, I think that more than me, she's always always extremely user minded. So uh, she's kind of the the beacon who says, "Hey, we we need to think about them, not about us. Uh, the dogs the dogs are not my babies." So it's it's really something that that needs to be functional and efficient. I really love this conversation you just had because I have a similar dynamics with one of my colleagues. So mm. it was like seeing ourselves from the outside. Anthony, can you tell us about the DevRel angle or how do you connect to all of this? Yeah, uh, there is something which is quite interesting with the Mirror platform is we have different technical components and they are very different. Marco is specialized in working with our UI library, which allows you to build like apps for the Miro, living in Miro. Mira has been specialized in REST APIs that allows you to connect, get the data connected to other tools. And we have even other components they are managing together. DevRel is kind of coming on top of this uh, reference documentation and trying to provide content that will educate our users and help them to adopt the product. Mira and Marco will know really the details in and out that will help us to build the right guide. And the team will build like code samples or examples that are end-to-end -end about an integration with a specific product or, or trying to build an app that helps for translation or something which is really how we can reuse all the smaller components into really an end-to-end -end app. Um, but the teams, the developer advocates and the creators, they work literally every day together. So even when the dev, the dev rel write content, the Marco and Mira own the, the quality and the level of content we're writing. So we always reviewer our provers and providing feedback, make sure we follow our guideline, we have the same books and tone, and, and what we write is actually technically true. Uh, they are the ones that know really the details working with the engineering teams um, every day. So equal, I, I said before, it's two different teams in the way we're organized. Uh, 
but the way they work and they, they interact, it's it's really it really acts as mm -hmm. a single uh, team. Technical writers as technical writers for uh, the, the the developer integrations, and the you are Mark Anthony, you are leading the the DevRel team. So I assume there wasn't a DevRel team before, or not in this form. So, and you're building on each other's work. So this is a bit of a chicken and an egg. How do you even start? What's the minimum viable way? How did you do this? And, and, and was there friction points here on what's more important? Yeah, I can elaborate on that. There's a bit of history behind before uh, any of the three of us joined. Miro had a developer platform for quite a couple of years, but it was, it was in an experimental mode. It's not a platform that has been promoted. It was kind of more proof of concept. It was still used, but it was not like a proper teams working on that. He was more like, hey, let's try to put that out and see what works. Uh, it got a big interest, but the quality of the platform in general, the quality of the documentation, the onboarding process and the tuning was not as high as we, as it should have been. So that's where Miro decided to build a full platform stream, literally a full department dedicated in building the right product. And he decided to restart from scratch. And that's where Miro, when, that's when Miro, Miro decided to hire a lot of people. He decided to build uh, a developer relations team, hire tech writers to start like more having the vision and making sure we're building the right product for the users. We started building as well the different engineering teams to build the different components we wanted, uh, build a developer experience team that would provide the tooling. Obviously hiring, and you mentioned it before, is hard, right? It takes time to build the right team, to find the right people and scale these departments. Uh, for example, if I remember well, I think the position for tech writers, they open one uh, at the beginning. It's just because during the interview process, they liked so much Mira and Marco, they decided, well, let's not wait for the need to have two right now. Let's hire both of them just because they are great. Um, and they joined the team tech writers they hired before I joined, before DevRel. So they were there already to start working on how we're going to be writing mm -hmm. the documentation, how it's going to work, and what's going to be the vision before I was even there in the company. Uh, when I joined, I started building the developer relations team. And they had already a manager for the developer experience team. So the manager of the experience, developer experience team started growing the team. When Mira joined, we mentioned that to be in the team. So it made sense that they were sitting in developer experience at that moment. And we started building and scaling DevRel in parallel. And now the two teams are quite staff. We have like, both teams are like between five and 10 people. Um, and the way they interact and they have built the vision, the team, the way they interact around tooling, the developer experience team, that the engineers are gonna help the tech writers with the tooling how they can integrate the tooling when they write, how it's automated publishing on the portal, how they test the documentation. They're going to be providing all these tools where developer relations is going to be more interacting on the content side. So I don't think there's ever been any, um, any problem there just because the scope of each team is quite well defined. DevRel has four pillars, which is very well defined. We write high level content, uh, educational content, we do the outreach strategy, everything which is presenting at events and webinars and promoting the platform externally. We do the support, we enter on community forum and Discord and we engage with our partners and, and customers and we collect the feedback from them and we support them. Um, and the last pillar is in general the platform community, the stream where the one doing community activities and growing that community. Where developer experience is really on the side of providing the tools and the enablement for these developers. How can we make the time to first ever work shorter? How can we make sure they have a playground when they can learn uh, and practice? So we can make sure they have all the type of documentation they need and the tooling to write this documentation and, and so on. So the, because the scope is quite well defined and we know which team owns what and we know how we can help each other and we define processes where if developer relations, developer advocates write a code sample before being published, it's going to be reviewed by developer experience because they are the one owning the high quality of the content and they have the a lot of engineers there. If you write a guide, tech writers are going to review it before publishing it to make sure we write at a high quality. Because we have this way of working with some gatekeeping, uh, so far it has been working pretty well from my point of view. I don't know if Mirai and Marco, you want to add anything on that? Um, yes. Um, I, I really like working with developer relations because they are very accessible, um, meaning that they are, um, they are they have an engineering background, uh, so they're very technical, uh, but they're also used to uh, disruptions more than a standard or a, a more traditional software engineer who is focused on solving a problem. Um, so it's it's quite easy to to just you know swing by or drop a quick Slack message say hey I'm 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 stuck with this thing can you can you help me figure it out? Um, there's always at least one 
um, person in, in developer relations who will have time um, really right now or in five minutes, let's do it. And, and, and then they, they do what they do because they guide you through the process uh, in a way that uh, I can finally understand it and then um, continue with my documentation. Um, but I also really enjoy reviewing guides from, or reviewing tutorials that I get from developer relations because, well, they were written, uh, they're nice, they haven't, they're, it's, it's good writing, basically. Um, and good writing that I can act on because usually I can, I try, I test the tutorial myself or I test the guide. I try to go through all the steps. Uh, so I get my hands dirty. Um, and I, I think that's, that's part of the fun. And, and communication is extremely easy, very responsive. Um, I, I, th I think we are quite lucky uh, to be a pretty aligned group. Uh, we, we, all, we all think about our audience, our public, and how we can best serve them and help them through the docs. Um, and there's, there's no, never a need to, to reassess that alignment. It's, it's really second nature for us. So um, that makes things a lot easier and smoother. Yeah, I'd like to add to that, um, to what Marco said. So that was the first thing that came to my mind when you asked this question. I think what made things a lot more easier for us to work, although we, we have like different people, different teams working together, is that we all work towards one goal. We have a vision and everybody is so aligned about that, that it makes it much easier to work, to collaborate and to support each other. And the DevRel team has been really, really amazing with that. I mean, um, they really, they went out of their way to go through the current content that we created as technical writers, provide feedback from a different perspective. And we really, I think, you know, took the content to the next level with their feedback. So that's very important for us. And because we also have that kind of input and feedback from them, you also really feel like giving back. So the moment there's a guide for review, I kind of like really put it on top priority, um, review it really in detail and try to also give back to what they've provided to us and try to also make that content really the best that we can put out there. Maybe what I can add on that is as well the way we work right now. So we are heavily use case oriented. So we try to enable a set of use cases of what you can do in or out of Miro, trying to support a specific uh, vertical. With the way we do usually, we have we start working on a new set of features. Engineers deliver that feature. Uh, developer advocates are usually the, the zero user. You're the first one trying and seeing if that works. Now we kind of have a practice when we try to run like a hack day internally, when we sit together uh, some of our, either our customers or an internal users, the engineering team and developer relations, when they basically need to be, to see if they're able to build an app with the new functionality. That's kind of say, if you if you're not able to do it internally in like a couple of hours, then it's not good enough. And at that moment, that's where kind of all the documentation process starts in parallel. Uh, the tech writers are going to work on the, the reference documentation, Developer operation is going to work on the guide and tutorial uh, and a demo app maybe for that. And they kind of evolve all in parallel. And it's kind of the, we learn about a feature as we document it and test it. And usually then we start releasing it in beta as well to start creating feedback from real end users. And we keep evolving the documentation based on that. And it's kind of work in an ideal world when that works, it's kind of everything works in parallel. So when we go stable, it has not only the feature, it has the right documentation, the right guys, the right demo app that helps you to onboard on that feature. We split our interview with our guests into two parts. This concludes part one. We invite you to listen to part two, in which we will talk further about how tech writer, developer experience and developer relations teams work together, how they aggregate and catalog all feedback, and also about how the current documentation evolved. Thank you for listening to the API The Docs podcast. Thanks again to our guest, to Pronovix for letting us work on this, and the entire API The Docs community for all of the mutual support and sharing of experiences that you give each other. Do you have a topic or guest you would like us to spotlight? Drop a note at podcast at pronovix.com. If you go to the website apidocs.org, you can find the recaps and recordings of past API The Docs conferences, as well as the upcoming program. Until next time, be well.